What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another great edition of No Love Philly Podcast, the podcast dedicated to artists, activists, musicians, comedians, breweries, basically anybody in, around, or passing through the city of brotherly love that makes this place as awesome as it is. Um, this is another installment of our time at Sensorium. We ran into Mr. Nick Pizer. Nick is a videographer, uh, an aspiring filmmaker. He was there doing some footage and filming for the festival, um, and we talk a lot about kind of uh, different mediums of, of uh, devices that you use for filming but we also talk about this rad stuff homeboy said i have nothing to talk about and then as we started talking um we find out that uh he actually won a um or was a part of a group that won a film contest um and they ended up flying him out to fucking paris um yeah so where he went to compete in another film project uh but really cool dude does a lot of great work he's done music videos throughout uh delaware and philadelphia for for different bands um but yeah man he's into it like he really knows his stuff um and and he's making it happen and he's doing things so it was really cool to meet nick um and this is his uh this is his interview so i hope you guys enjoy it talk to you later Mike, check, check one, check two. You got it? Check, check. Oh, man, this Get is perfect. Me? Oh, this is perfect, man. All right, sick. Dude, so we're here at Sensorium. You guys drop by the booth. You got some fucking beautiful, badass equipment going on. Right. Tell me you do a little bit of filmmaking. Tell me your name. Tell me the name of your company. Tell me what you do. My name is Nick Pizer. I am currently working freelance. I'm here in the Philadelphia area. Just uh, working with anyone that I can at this point. Where are you from originally? I'm from Newark, Delaware, so not too far. Right. But, uh... It was big enough of a jump, you know, to get my career started. For sure. So so were you the one that produced last year's video? I was not, actually. Okay. This is my first time working with Sensorium. I've known Joe. You know Joe Vela? Yeah. I yeah, yeah. For this yeah, I've, uh, I've known Joe for a long time. I went to college with him at UD. Uh, um, and this is the first year that he's in, he's invited me on to do the video. And I'm very excited about it. Dude, there's a lot going on tonight. And there's, like, a lot of, like, great stuff happening visually. There is. Um, there's tons of art. There's a lot of musicians. Two stages. There's gonna be, you're going to be here all night? I will be here all night. All right. So you're doing freelance, right? Yes. Um, freelance videographer. What are some projects that you've worked on so far? So I say it again? Some projects that you've worked on so far. Uh, I've worked on... Some commercial stuff. Uh, we, I worked on a promo for the state of Delaware, which is a promo to get, you know, when Amazon was doing their, uh, trying to move their headquarters, build a new headquarters somewhere. Uh, everyone was vying for it. I worked on the video for Delaware. They didn't pick it, but it was a pretty good video that we made. Uh, did that. I do a lot of music video stuff with different bands around the area, different bands from Delaware. And now that's what we're going to talk about. Sure. All right. So what are some of the bands that you've, uh, that you've worked with around the area? Uh, well, there's some bands that are down in Delaware because when I came out of there, there was no one else really doing video work in that area. So I kind of cornered that market a little bit because there's a ton of great music coming out of the area. And uh, there's bands like Eyeball, uh, Grace Vonderkoon, there's Fiance. Fiance is a big promising act coming out of Delaware right now. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of really underground stuff. That I've been working with. So, when you're doing a uh, when you're doing a video in your your like if you're doing something for, uh, is there something in particular that you're looking for? Um, when I'm shooting when a video. When, well, when you're taking on a project. Uh, I would say, when taking on a project, I'm looking for something that I connect to for one. Something that if it's a style or a musician that I can connect to and really find something that I can see myself in or really feel. Um, it's also very important to find artists that are dedicated to what they're doing. And if they have passion for what they're doing, then I'll be able to feed off of that and look and, and, and work with that and make something out of it. Passion is great. They also, uh, an awesome thing that they could have is a budget. A budget sure. helps. A budget budget <laughs> is also very important. But it's, it's up to this point. I have been working with little to no budget for most of the things that I've done. You know, so... It's really about the creativity and the team that you're able to put together. What did you go to school for? Like, what was your I major? went to UD, so I, they didn't have a hands-on film program. So I went to school for English, concentrating in film studies, which was more about the history of film and film theory and cinematic language and how films are constructed and all that kind of stuff. So how did that, how did that translate into you getting into... Um, getting into the technical aspect of that, though? Because the you learn the theory and everything like sure. that, but it's not... It, this is difficult. What you do is not an yeah. easy thing. Well, I mean, the technical stuff, 
it was something that was kind of a necessary evil, I would say. Not that it's a bad thing to learn. It's great to know how to do this kind of stuff because my main goal as a filmmaker is to be a writer-director because that's where I, that's, that's the position that I love to be in. But um, it's very important to understand all the different aspects of what goes into a film and how everyone works. And being able to recognize and understand everyone else's viewpoints is a huge part of directing and being able to create that final product. So how long have you been how long have you been actively doing and creating work like regularly? Uh about a year and a half maybe. That's it. Dude? Yeah, it's you still new. have all of those projects under your belt? Yeah. Um is this something that you do full time? Are you a, a are you a Right now, well, it was full time, but uh, since freelance is very much a give and take kind of thing, it's very sporadic sometimes. I'm actually picking up a job right now as an audiovisual technician in Center City here in Philadelphia. Uh, so that'll be nice to kind of fill in all the gaps, but it's definitely film is something that I would love to make my full time gig. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. And so, um, had, do you go to local shows at all? Are you ever. Um, go to shows? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I go to shows all the time. Um, you know, there's there's one of my friends' bands, Tetra. Uh, they're they're pr building a pretty good name around here in the Philly area, and they put a lot of sh a lot of shows on in the Fishtown area, like Kung Fu Necktie and uh, Ort Leaps and Johnny Brandes, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, I've been connecting a lot more with the the scene around here through them and through their through through the shows they've been putting on. So do you, you say you want to be a filmmaker? What are what are some of the films that you would like to make? Like what genre? What do you want to be I am a, I'm very influenced by films that are more relationship and human connectivity based, you know? So it's kind of stuff like Duplass and Link Later, very, very humanistic films, very naturalistic. And my main goal as a writer is to figure out how do you create a uh, person. How do you create a full body person? Because you have to know who they are in their past, how they came to be where they are. You have to know their future. You have to know everything about this person. They have to be a real person to you to write about them and how they interact with other people. Everything, everything of who we are right now is all part of, like, like, we are a culmination of everything in our life and what we've gotten to at this point. So everything that we decide to do now is, is who we are as a person. And creating that on paper is is kind of a daunting task, but it's something that is very intriguing. What all goes into? You said you've done music videos for some people, What's right? That? You say you've done music videos. Is that right? I have. Yes. What all goes into that process for creating a music video? Absolutely, because you see the final. Everybody sees the final product. We get that wonderful two and a half minutes to four minutes and thirty seconds. Sure. And we see it, and it goes on, and we're scrolling through our feed, and, yeah. and we, we don't think much about right. somebody had to fucking film that, put it together. What is that it's process a, like? It's a, it is a whole thing, really. Uh, so when you start, like, you have to have the song to start, right? And then you sit down, and you talk with the musicians, you talk with whoever wrote the song, uh, and see what their original is. Because when... Cause when um, a musician writes a song, they have a feeling about it. They are seeing things, they're understanding things, and it's usually pulled from their own life experiences. Uh, so you have to, sometimes you take that and you really want to understand how they're feeling about it, and you also have to be on the same page with the artist. Uh, so you can take their life experiences and what they're talking about. And you could either go in that direction or you could go in an entirely different direction. It's really just about conceptualizing and understanding. And I'm the kind of artist who likes to have an entire idea finished like I like to have the final project kind of put together before I start shooting anything you know so I'll sit down and I'll write out a script I'll write down scene directions a whole idea for what I want to do um, and then maybe a storyboard sometimes if I'm not working camera a storyboard's great because then you can help your director of photography know what you're talking about uh, and then scheduling and location wise is a big thing as well um, a lot goes into it really you know? What's been your favorite music video that you've done so far? What's my favorite music video? That you've done, that you've done so far. Um, there was one that I did that was actually my senior my senior video. I mean, not my senior video, but it was a final project for a class I was taking senior year. And uh, it was one by for a band called Maiden Names, which doesn't exist anymore. It was for a song called Soft Grunge. And it was uh, 
it was great to make because the concept was that we were getting as many of our friends as involved as possible. So it was kind of just a performance in a living room. But then we would have uh, cutaways where people would be in front of a, a gray a gray backdrop. And it was kind of just like everyone interacting and all of our friends being involved. And I think that was a very big thing because it was really nice to have that community camaraderie involved in this. And then it's also great because that's a free promotion, you know. The more people involved, the more people are going to share right, it. Right, right. So what do you think is the most difficult part of your job? Uh, most difficult part? Honestly... Filmmaking is tough work. Every single part of it is very important, but it's all difficult, and all of it has to work together in the right way to make something good. Uh, I wouldn't say that there's any one part of it that's any more difficult than anything else, but if everyone who's on the team is able to come together and work together, then you're going to make something that's great. So as somebody, me personally, that I'm super interested in um, video and editing, right? Editing, I... It's editing. Just so time consuming. Yeah, editing right? is wild. It is. What is the best editing software that you can think of? What What, what do you? Oh man, people will swear by Premiere Pro. They all do. They'll swear by Premiere. I use Final Cut Ten. I'm saying Premiere and Final Tech for me, as somebody like a novice going into it. Sure. It's fucking overwhelming. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it that's that's with anything though. Um, with any tool that you're just learning, whether you're a musician, filmmaker, anything that you're using. You don't know how to use it the first time, and it just takes practicing knowing your tools. And it's the thing that people always say that one workstation is better than another, but Premiere versus Final Cut, it's all kind of the same thing because it's all about knowing your tools and knowing how to get to things because you can do anything on either one. It's just about knowing how to use your tools. Wow, man. Um, so when you're shooting, what kind of equipment What are you using? When you're shooting... Uh, yeah, I mean, right here I have a Sony A7S II, and this is great for, it shoots 4K, it shoots low light, uh, shoots 120 frames per second. You're so doing you can pretty get good really for a freelancer, bro. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, it's an investment, you know, it's an investment. Um, you get that, like, this is good for something that I can use myself, but when you want to go on, like, professional commercial sets and film sets and short films and that kind of stuff, uh, I've had access to, like, red cameras, which are, like, 4K, 6K, 8K, um, you can get those. You can get RE cameras, which are what professionals in Hollywood use. Um, but it's really, honestly, my biggest thing is that I'm also a big fan of David Lynch. And David Lynch shot uh, one of his films, Lost Highway, on a, on a camcorder. Yeah. You know? And he's always said this thing that sometimes you don't want the high definition because part of the mystery is not being able to see what's in those shadows, not being able to see this. And there's also the Duplass brothers. They got into Sundance with a film that they shot on also just like a little sony i don't even know what it was something a little uh camcorder that was very low quality i think it was standard definition uh and they made it into sundance with that because story the biggest thing about making film is that story is king you know for me personally that's how i believe and then everything else goes into that because without believable characters and without a believable real story that you can that the audience can connect to you don't really have much so on that same note as a videographer and somebody who's doing that what do you think of um People using the their cell phones and, and things like that for I video production. I think that is great. Do you? I think it's great. All right, so the thing is that being in this modern age is that photography and film is open to anyone at this point because everyone has a camera that can do both in their pocket. Uh, and I think that's amazing because it opens things up to people who can just shoot things at home, shoot things wherever they, wherever they are. And maybe, like, you know, social media culture is kind of toxic to a degree, um, but... It is crazy that people are able to make these vlogs and really express themselves in a different way, whether that, whether it may be like real expressiveness or how they want to be perceived on the internet. Either way, it's something that they're uh, able to share. Um, and there's Steven Soderbergh, who um, just put out a film recently. He, re he put out a film called Unsane recently that uh, was entirely shot on an iPhone, I think, 7 Plus or 6 Plus. I forget which one. But the entire movie was shot on an iPhone. Um, and he is an advocate that like traditional filmmaking, not, it's not, I don't think it's dead, but we're definitely moving in a direction that opens things up a lot more for people who previously were not able to make movies and really express themselves in these ways. Have you had the opportunity to mess around with any of those mediums? What's like, that? Have you had an opportunity to mess around with any of those mediums? Like I, um, I'm still, I'm still rocking like an iPhone five right now. So I don't really do a whole lot of that on my phone, but 
I mean, I got I got this camera here that I can work with, which right. is also great. But it's just like I think it's very much a big part of utilizing what you have access to. That I think that's a great point, right? Yeah. So like you see all these awesome different videos that are even even me like somebody yeah. that's interested in it's like um, you get a little nerve wracked by it like ah. Uh, I don't have yeah. this awesome 4K yeah. camera. And that's or, not important, really. Right. It's and, not important. And so um, I'm kind of a believer right now starting off is that I think it's more important at this point to get it put together and get it put out. Maybe it's not yeah. perfect, right. but it's out and it's practice and you I see mean, the flaw. I do think that that is kind of a curse of being an artist where you might make something and you might have incredible gear and you've done all this, uh, but it's not... Having expectations and having having expectations for your work is kind of detrimental, I would say, because in my experience, you make something and then you don't want to put it out because it's not what you wanted it to be. But it is what it is. And as an artist who's growing and progressing, it's very important to recognize where you are and not really over over try to trying to overachieve is when people t kind of fall apart a little bit you know the other thing i think too is by putting it i understand having that standard but i also think having that out and you seeing that base and as time goes on and you're watching your own you're watching your own progress and then exactly. you, something you've done a year ago that was by all means shit uh -huh. with the little bit of shit that you had. But you never progress unless you move past this exactly one project. Right. Right. And, exactly right. And, and, and if you if you get it out there, you can. There's a starting point right yeah. there. And so after that, you're able to kind of like a year later see, oh wow, dude, I have progressed. I have grown. Exactly. I have, it's wild. Um, it's a. I I thought this was a shitty camera or whatever. I was just using it shitty, and now that I know how to use it the correct exactly. way, um, I've got something kind of magnificent, which is not the greatest, you know, uh, Steven Spielberg quality, whatever, yeah, or sure. or the greatest uh, um, uh, video or audio quality. But man, it's so much better than than right. what I had before or what I was. And doing that's before. that's the beautiful thing is that you are able to always learn from stuff that you've done previously. Whatever it is, you're always learning. As the same as we are as people in general, every day you learn something new about the world around you. What do you think you've learned in the past year? What what from, what is something from filmmaking? From, yeah, uh, I've learned that it will never turn out how you want it to. <laughs> it will <laughs> always be different than how you expect it to be. And that's even more to say when you work with big crews, it is always different. Communication is also incredibly important. Is it difficult at all? I mean, as a freelancer, and, I, and I'm just speaking from experience as a writer, being a freelancer as a writer. Yeah. You work on you work on your own. You know what I mean? It's by yourself. Right. Do you ever find it difficult? Like you're saying, you're taking this audio visual job. Sorry, say working, one more time. So, do you ever find it difficult? You were saying that you're doing this audio visual job coming right. soon to work with another group and it's kind of like, uh, well, I'd really like to do it this way or... Uh, absolutely. I mean, that's, I mean, I'm not a control freak, but that is why I'm interested in being a director. <laughs> uh, because I, mean. I feel like I go into things, then I, I like to conceptualize from beginning to end before I even start the project. So I've been on film sets before where people get on set and the director's like, I don't know, we'll figure it out as we go. And I'm like, that's, you, you can do that to a degree, but really going into something with no plan is kind of it's it's not my way of working so it has it is it is a bit of a point of contention but you just got to move past it and work with people you know and it's like just being able to work with people being able to communicate is very important so aside from the sensorium uh that you're doing today do you have any other upcoming projects or something that you'd like to to talk about honestly uh that is a good question uh, I'm honestly, I'm trying to put some music videos together right now, but nothing is really fully locked down at this point. Um, we, d I did just participate in a 48 hour film competition like two weeks ago. No shit. Tell me about that. Yeah, So that's a thing in Philadelphia every year where you have to basically write, shoot, edit, and finalize and like physically drop off the film to a drop off location within 48 hours, the whole thing. Uh, and the thing about that is you don't you can't work on it beforehand because you, as soon as your time starts, someone has to drive to this location. Uh, they're given a genre, a line of dialogue, a prop, and a character with a profession that you have to include. Everyone has to include those things. Um, you don't know that until your time starts, so you can't start writing. So as soon as you get that, you just start writing it. 
So what did you do it on? I was the uh, what, what? What did I do? Yeah. What was my role? Well, yeah. What? It, so you entered this project, correct? Yeah. Um, you were on a team, or I was on a. We had like a thirty-person crew this year no because last shit. year, last year my team won. We won best in the city, so we got sent to Paris in France. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, keep going. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we won best in the city last year for our film, and we went to Paris, France for the international round. And uh, we didn't win any more there, but it was amazing to be able to go out there and really interact with all the other filmmakers and everyone who won their best best in their city and see the best in the world. It was very cool. Okay, so first of all, what what did what was your what was your your film last year? Our film last year was called Broommates, and it was a story. We got mockumentary as our genre, uh, so you know, kind of straightforward. It was we ended up writing something about. A guy who his girlfriend moves out on him, moves out of his apartment. They break up. She moves out. He's like, fuck, well, I got to pay rent, you know? So he puts an ad out on Craigslist, and then um, the he's like, he has to pay rent. So the first people that respond to it, he brings in, and it turns out to be like a coven of witches. So it's this one witch, and he's like, all right, she signs it, and then three other witches show up. Um, and it's basically about them interfering with his daily life. So, like, he goes in the fridge, and there's – a Tupperware full of blood with a thing on it that says not blood written on it, you know. There's, like, chicken gizzards in the sink and shit. And it's just, uh, it's just very mundane things from his perspective. So, is that available on YouTube? That is. It's on Vimeo. So, if you search it on Vimeo right now, or if you probably Google search Broommates or 48-Hour Film Project, that will probably come up. All right. So, now I want to talk about what was your time like in Paris. How long were you there? And We were there for about a week. Um, it was great. I love Paris. It was my first time, my second time being in Europe in general. Uh, being there, being in Paris for a reason was very, very cool. Uh, being able to walk around and be like, I'm here because I want a thing, you know? That was very cool. Um, and it was a lot of, they had a lot of events for the filmmakers and being able to meet the other filmmakers and talk to people because now I have connections all around the world for people. So if I ever have to go to these different countries to work on something, I have people that I can talk to. And I feel like that's an invaluable tool. You know, it's an invaluable resource. For sure, man. Because, I mean, you never know when you're going to be around Paris filming. In yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, hopefully again soon. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so you did it again this year, correct? We did it again this year. What was this year's uh, uh, video about? This year, it was, it was pretty different, actually, because we noticed last year going to the international round that what really was – uh, favored by the judges were the drama-oriented things, you know, drama, character pieces, because those are the kind of things that floated to the top. Um, so this year we tried to go a little bit different, and we wrote this story about we wrote this story about this guy who has an imaginary friend, and it all takes place in this imaginary world. You, we don't know this until the end. I'm just spoiling everything right now, but uh, uh, it's the story about this kid who kind of grew up with trauma with his parents and his his parents fighting, his dad beating him. So he created this imaginary friend to be kind of a buffer, like a literal, like me like a mental and literal buffer between his dad attacking him. And um, it was kind of this thing about how we think that the film opens up when we think it's this uh, love affair. Because this guy wakes up, he's kidnapped, he's tied to a chair in this room. And then uh, this guy comes out and they start talking like it's kind of this jilted love affair, like a crazy lover kidnapped him and now going to torture him all this kind of stuff but then it kind of devolves into this childlike play scenario where he's like taking him on adventures but then the adventures are all inside of his head and you hear in the background that it's these it's him reliving these times his parents were fighting and you hear this in the background of these adventures that they go on uh and then it kind of just gets to this point where the where the abuse in the background gets so loud that the imaginary friend's like dude i can't do this anymore like i can't keep hurting you and then the guy in the chair is like, you have to. You have to keep doing this. So it's this idea that he's really depressed in his future. And he has brought back this imaginary friend to kind of like beat him up on the inside. So it's this idea that when we're all like kind of down on ourselves, the imaginary, he brings back this imaginary friend to kind of beat up on himself. You know, he's depressed and he's thinking about all these memories. Wow, bro. That is some trauma drama. Yeah, it's this. It was, That's it was deep. Right. Dude. We were trying to go deep with it. It was and then, very deep, bro. Yeah. And yeah. And then there's, there's there's an ending to it that kind of perpetuates the whole thing. So these are short films. It was a short film. It's about seven minutes. Wow, man. And is that available as well right now? It or? is not. It's not actually out yet, okay. um, but it's called The Games We Play. And it will probably be on Vimeo soon because the awards haven't been announced yet. It's been about a week and a half since we screened it. 
So the awards haven't been announced yet, but what was the reception when you screened it? Uh, I think people were interested. You know, it was tough to say because it's a drama thing. So like, there's no. Well, we had a couple jokes in there, so people reacted to that. Uh, but it's tough to say with drama stuff because I think people liked it. The, but there was nobody coming up to you guys afterwards, like, "Yo, that was." There were there was... were a couple people, but uh, I had to leave early, so I couldn't really Got stick you. around. Got you. Um. Wow, man. So when does that when when would that be available? And when do you guys find out the the uh, winners and stuff? <laughs> it is a little up in the air right now. No one's really sure when we're going to have the awards announced, but I would say maybe in a week or two, something around there, you might be able to find it. The games we play. That is correct. All right, man. Uh, is there any other project, anything else that you're working on that you'd like to to talk about? Uh, n- n- right now, that's about it. Uh, doing the Sensorium video today. Awesome, doing this, man. Doing this here. Um, people want to get a hold of you, check out your work. Where do they do that? And you can go to vimeo.com slash njpizer. That's N-J-P-I-S-E-R. I also have an Instagram that's at njpizer. Um, that's where I put everything. Awesome, brother. Thank you so much for your time for a guy that didn't have much to talk about. <laughs> yeah, you right. Talk Thank about you. A lot, man. Um, I look forward to seeing your work, man. And Thank I look you. forward to seeing what you produce here. All right. We'll talk to you later.